I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Okay, let's hit that light, but, uh, Brooklyn, right next to your head there. Kids! Kids, you got to go somewhere and do something, right? <laughs> resurrection, and then it says he ascended into heaven. Is the ascension of Jesus into heaven an important part of that story? Yes. yes. It's way more than E.T. phone home. Okay? <laughs> and so we want to talk about that today. If you don't understand that reference, I'm actually glad you did. Uh, but if you're around my age, you couldn't escape E.T. So let's start Luke 24. Luke 24. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Luke 24. <clears throat> Luke chapter 24. We're going to start in verse 44. It says, Now he said to them, Who is he? Jesus. Okay, now he said to them, These are my words, which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things which are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer, rise again from the dead the third day, and that repentance for forgiveness of sins will be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I am sending forth the promise of my Father upon you. You are to stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Who is he talking to? The disciples. Talking to the disciples. And then in verse 50 it says, He led them out as far as Bethany, lifted up his hands, blessed them. While he was blessing them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven, and they are worshiping him, returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple praising God. See, the big question about this is, man, why couldn't Jesus stay? Is the world in a good place right now or a pretty, like, troubled place? I'm not stretching the truth to say that, am I? Okay. I, I don't know that a pastor ever stood in front of a congregation ever in the history of the world where that wasn't true in some respect. Okay? So as long as there's evil in the world, the place is messed up. Right? It just is. So why couldn't... Well, how much easier would it be if I could say, hey, I actually saw Jesus this week, talked to him, and he... Why couldn't Jesus say it, it just seems like it would have made things so much better. Why couldn't he have set up his kingdom on earth right after the resurrection? Why this 2,000 years uh, 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 between there? <coughs> you 
uh, you can't be serious about your faith at all unless you've laid in bed at night and wondered why couldn't Jesus be here. Let's get some context to this. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 1. If you were in Luke, now you're going to go to the right in your Bible, uh, six or seven books, and you'll find Hebrews. Hebrews is a pretty big book. Even if you're kind of flipping with your fingers, you should be able to see it. Hebrews chapter 1. What's that? Is it way more than that? It's like 15. Okay. Hebrews what? Sorry. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 says, God... After he spoke long ago to the fathers and the prophets in many portions and in many ways. And these last days has spoken to us in his son. Okay, let's pause right there for a minute. So the author or the speaker of Hebrews says, In the old days when he spoke to the fathers, the fathers of the faith, he used prophets. But in the last days he has spoken to us in his son. Who is the son? Jesus. So what days are we in? We're in the last days. Now, when people ask me about, hey, well, what do you feel like the end of the world, or are we going to do it? Is it going to happen like this? Is it going to happen like this? What I say is every day we're closer, mm -hmm. every day, which is my cop-out way of saying, nah, I don't know. <laughs> but every day we're closer. And I do believe the book, when the book says we're in the last days. So if you look at our timeline, we go from God speaks, okay, let there be light. And we move all the way over to this painting right here, which was a vision I had about three, four years ago, where essentially... God is ready to judge the earth. And the archangel Michael is saying to, saying to the Lord, God, I know you love them, but they're never going to get this. We're never going to be kind to one another. We're never going to love one another. We're never going to bless one another, which is all what we're supposed to be doing. It's always going to be war and strife and chaos and junk. The angels are ready. God can wrap it up whenever he wants to. And what I realized when I had this vision during COVID, there's a longer story here I can tell you later. What I realized is that the only reason why Judgment Day hasn't come is because Jesus still loves us. And there's still mission yet to do here. But we are in the last days. Make no mistake of that. Now, does that mean we're going to see it in our lifetime? I don't know. But I believe the book when it says we're in the last days. Okay, in these last days has spoken to us in his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. And he, talking about Jesus, is the radiance of his glory. Okay. He, Jesus, is the radiance of God the Father's glory. He is the radiance of his glory and the exact <coughs> representation of his nature. Upholds all things by the word of his power, when he had made purification of sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. When did he make purification of sins? On the cross. Okay, on the cross. When he had made purification of sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty. When did he sit down at the right hand of the majesty on high? At the ascension. At the ascension. That's what we're talking about today. He sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much better than the angels, as he had inherited a more excellent name than they. Now, stay in Hebrews, go to uh, chapter 2, verse 9. Chapter 2, verse 9. But we do not see him who, had, who was made for a little while lower than the angels, namely Jesus, because of the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. That's wordy, wordy, work your way through it. We, but we do see him who was made for a little while lower than the angels, namely Jesus. Because of the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting for him for whom are all things, 
and through him and through whom are all. Oh, I practice saying this and I still mess it up. Okay. <laughs> Let me try this again. For it was fitting for him for whom are all things and through whom are all things. <sighs> all things are through him and for him. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. In bringing many sons to glory to perfect the author of their salvation through sufferings. For both he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified are all from one father. Understand what he's saying. Both he who sanctifies, who's he? Jesus. And those who are sanctified, who is that? Us. Us, okay, are all from one Father. Fair enough? Yeah. One Creator, right? <laughs> For which reason he is not ashamed to call them brothers. Who's them? Us. You ever thought that Jesus isn't ashamed to call you brother? Sometimes we're ashamed to call him Lord, but he's not ashamed to call us brother. Isn't that cool? Isn't that a cool thought? Okay. Let's stay in chapter 2. Go to verse 14. Therefore, okay, we're brothers, brethren with Christ. Therefore, since the children, us, share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise also partook of the same, that through death he might render powerless him who had the power of death, that is, the devil, and might free those who through fear of death were subject to slavery all their lives. For assuredly, he does not give help to angels, but he gives help to the descendant of Abraham. Who is that? Uh, Us. Therefore, he had to be made like his brethren in all things, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God. A merciful and faithful what? High, high, high priest. High priest. In th that's interesting. In things pertaining to God. To make propitiation for the sins of the people. For since he himself was tempted in that which he has suffered, he is able to come to the aid of those who are tempted. Do you actually believe that that's true? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Therefore, holy brothers, partakers of a heavenly calling, consider Jesus the apostle and high priest of our confession. Consider Jesus the apostle, the one sent, and the high priest, the one who intercedes, of our confession. What's a high priest? That's a good question, right? <laughs> what is a high priest? So a high priest is a, it's a Jewish word, okay? The high priest is one that offered sacrifice, that offered the blood to God for the reconciliation uh, and the atonement of the people. And this happened once a year uh, on what was called the Day of Atonement. Annette, are you back at your spot or are you refereeing somewhere? No, she's she's, she's, she's okay. refereeing. All right. Somebody has to. Mario. Man, wrong. Okay, there she is. Annette, I need the, the picture up on the screen. No, you're fine. You're fine. So, anybody ever heard the word Yom Kippur? Here on news, Yom Kippur. Okay, so Yom Kippur is, is just the, the Hebrew word for the Day of Atonement. Okay, so the Day of Atonement was like the once a year huge holiday uh, for for Jews in which they they would receive atonement and forgiveness for their sins for another year. Okay, um, so we need to talk about that a little bit just so we can catch a little context. And those doors aren't open, so I'm going to come over here or closer to the screen. Um, so once a year, the high priest would sacrifice a bull, and he would sacrifice the bull here. I know it's blurry. Sorry. <laughs> but he would sacrifice a bull here. And the reason why he would sacrifice a bull is that in their culture, that was the most valuable animal that they had. I mean, so the bull made, the bull made babies. 
but the bull also did the work. I mean, it was very valuable in a farming community nation to have the bull. So the bull would represent the priest, the high priest, and the high priest's family would represent their sins. So the high priest is taking the most valuable animal to sacrifice and then take the blood of that bull and would come into the temple, okay, uh, I know this is blurry and hard to see, but there's a, the dividing wall right here. This is the Holy of Holies in here where the Ark of the Covenant is, the mercy seat where the presence of God would be. There's a set of stairs that would lead up to that. This is called the holy place. The priests would serve in there every day. This is where the altar of incense was and things like that. So the priest would bring the, the blood of the bull into the holy place and put it on the altar of incense and get the clouds of incense and smoke going. Does that make sense? So it would fill this whole area. And then he would carry the blood up the steps into the holy place once a year. And he would drip the blood of the bull on the horns of the altar of the Ark of the Covenant, on the mercy seat, and on the lid. And what it was intended to do was cleanse the Holy of Holies of sin so that the presence of God could come. Because God can't come where there's filth. you got to be cleansed. Go. Is that the same place where the curtain was? Where the curtain yes, was yes, 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 good call. So the veil was right there. The veil, the big heavy curtain? Yeah. Yep, exactly right. Everybody understand the bull part? Yeah. Okay. So that would happen once a year. Um, Yeah, so what we got to catch from that is that the, the priest would cleanse the area with the blood of the bull, which represented the sins of the high priest, the most valuable animal. When Jesus died on the cross, he was the most valuable. He was the most holy. He was the only one without sin, yet died for sin. He was the perfect sacrificial animal, if you want to think about it that way, right? What his blood did is cleanse the way, cleanse the area so that the presence of God can come. You with me on that? <laughs> Second thing the high priest would do is he would come back out of there, and then he had two goats. And... He, they would cast lots. You understand what cast lots mean? It's the old-fashioned rock, paper, scissors to see which goat was going to be which goat. So one goat was going to get sacrificed, and the other goat was going to end up being the scapegoat. We'll talk about the scapegoat in a minute. So they would cast lots and decide which goat was going to be the sacrifice. That goat represented us, represented the people. And so that goat would get sacrificed out here, Carried into the temple, there would be some elements in here that, that the priest would drip the blood of the people on. But then, there, remember, there's smoke and clouds and all of this kind of stuff. Because as all of the people were waiting, this was once a year. Imagine for a minute. We are still doing this. That once a year, we would go to the great temple. And the holiest man in our lives would be offering blood sacrifice for what we just, for the, for the sins that we did. <clears throat> would you be there? Or would you be like working? Would you be curious to know how all that came out? <clears throat> the whole world stopped on the Day of Atonement. There's actually a 40-day buildup of prayer and repentance to get to the Day of Atonement. So as the priest, the high priest, as he's going in, these doors are wide open. And they're, everybody, everybody's waiting. Which means there are some people that are watching. <laughs> and that's what the clouds and the incense are about. It's so you can't see through. So when he opens the veil, you can't see it's covered. 
covered in cloud, covered in smoke, that kind of thing. So when the present, when the way is cleansed and the presence of God comes and occupies the mercy seat, and the high priest once a year opens that that veil, that big curtain to walk in there, you can't go. Oh, oh I just saw a little hand yeah, like a sandal. <laughs> you can't see anything. Does that make sense? Okay. So as the high priest works his way through and ascends up the steps into the Holy of Holies, carrying the blood of the people, it's an offering that he offers unto Yahweh, unto the Lord, now that the place is cleansed and the presence of God come. Is everybody following me so far? I know we're not Jewish and I'm leaving out lots of stuff, but I'm trying to just get a grasp. If we're in the crowd... And we see the high priest, you know, of course, there's a, you know, there's a lookout. He's inside! I mean, you know that's happening. People are people. So if we're out here in a crowd and we know that the high priest is in the presence of God, are we forgiven? Are we atoned yet? <clears throat> Not yet. What has to happen for us to be atoned? <coughs> got to come back. High priest got to come back. So the high priest then descends from the Holy of Holies, works his way back through the cloud and the incense and all that kind of stuff, and then he comes outside and he takes the sins of the people that are now in his hands and he puts them on the head of the other goat. Now, the other goat it his his <clears throat> In modern times, it's been called a scapegoat, all right? And he transfers the sins of the people to the goat. And then they take the goat out to the wilderness areas, outside the city gate, outside where there's no law, lawlessness reigns, and they let the, gate, the, the, the goat go, and the goat lives, dies, forgotten, gone forever, never seen again, Whatever, but the sins of the people go with it. <clears throat> that was the ritual. Does that make sense at all? Okay. So, I tell you all of those things to try to catch some of the context. Because this is really the answer to the original question that we started off with is, why couldn't Jesus stay? Why couldn't he set up his kingdom? And he couldn't set up his kingdom because Jesus had to carry our blood our guilt, our sin, to Yahweh, to God the Father. He had to carry it to the Lord for reconciliation, for atonement. Now, if you've read this book at all, you recognize that as soon as Jesus carried that blood, that, that the Lord was in. The Lord's not going to reject it. But the high priest hasn't come back. <coughs> Are you tracking with me? <clears throat> so, atonement wasn't fully received until the high priest would return and then he laid hands on the scapegoat and transferred the sins of the people to the scapegoat. The scapegoat carried these sins into the wilderness, blah, 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 where... Then, atonement was received. So if the ascension is, is Jesus ascending to the heavens, to the holy place, to the holy of holies, ascending to God's presence as our high priest, carrying our blood, our sins, our with him, then where are we at in this model in the moment, in the present? Waiting for the high priest to come back. Waiting for the high priest to come back. Some of us are, are, are more attuned to that than others. What I mean is, some of us are like the guy who's looking constantly. I mean, you, there are people that you know in your life are like, I'm just waiting on the Lord. I'm just waiting. Now I'm reading Revelation every day, looking for signs. I mean, I really think that, that Revelation 
tells a story in which the good guys win at the end, and I'm not sure how that all works. And, and, I'm, and I'm comfortable with that. Some people are very much more down the road of how does prophecy work and all of it. They're actively watching and waiting for the high priest to return. And then some of us live a life where we didn't even know Jesus was the high priest. We didn't know we're watching and waiting. We, we, didn't, we didn't understand any of this, where we are, in the crowd, any of that. And you know what? That's okay. Because now you know. Because <laughs> now you know. What does it mean to watch and wait? Say again. More than that. Have faith. Say again, Kenny. Have faith. Have, having faith, certainly. If you were in that crowd and you knew what you did the last year, and you watched that goat get sacrificed, and you watched the, the high priest carry that blood, and you knew some of that blood represented the junk you were involved in, and you knew the high priest was still in there, and he hasn't come back yet. And so atonement for you has not yet been received. What were they doing? They were on their knees praying. They were on their knees praying. Because the high priest is interceding on their behalf and saying, Lord, forgive them. They know not what they do. What is Jesus doing for us right now? Interceding on our behalf. I'm thankful that Jesus is in the heavenly realms right now with Yahweh, God the Father, saying, uh, Lord, you got to forgive John. He doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> I'm completely cool with that assessment. I'm happy about that. I want the mercy of God. I, I don't want to be held to a standard of excellence that I know I can't do. So what's my role? I need to be watching and waiting and praying. Lord, hear the words of your son. Hear the words of your son. Does that make sense? Okay, let's go to Acts. Let's go to Acts, which is to the left. I'm not sure how many books to the left. I just know it's to the left. Acts chapter 1. <coughs> Acts chapter 1, I'm going to start verse 1. The first account I composed, Theophilus. Now remember, this is a letter that Luke wrote, St. Luke wrote, to a guy named Theophilus. So, about all that Jesus began to do and teach. Until the day when he was taken up to heaven. Talking about the ascension. Okay? Until the day when he was taken up to heaven. After he had, by the Holy Spirit, given orders to the apostles whom he had chosen. Okay, those apostles, that's a great commission. Go therefore make disciples of all nations, that kind of thing. To these, he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proofs. Remember all the stuff that we've been doing the last couple weeks? See my hands, see my side, road to Emmaus, all those stories. Those are the convincing proofs. Um, appearing to them over a period of 40 days. Okay, interesting. To these, he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over a period of 40 days. The Day of Atonement is preceded by 40 days of spiritual preparation. So before the high priest would make the sacrifices go, they actually had a 40-day preparation of a whole bunch of mini festivals and mini spiritual ceremonies that prepared you to get to the time where reconciliation and atonement would occur. These were times of repentance. They were times of soul searching. They were times of, 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 of ascertaining your moral compass. All of these things. Does that make sense? How many days between Easter and the Ascension? 40. 40. Exactly the same as the Day of Atonement's uh, celebrations. Now, if you think about Jesus' story, the stories we've been doing since Easter, of Jesus appearing to disciples, road to Emmaus, the 153 fish, the cast your net on the other side, the, the Peter, do you love me? All of those stories have the same theme. And the stories 
the, the theme that the stories have is this. Set your doubt to the side. Set your fear to the side. Trust in me and carry out the mission. Every one of those stories has that. It's the same as you are, are preparing yourself to receive something. What were the disciples preparing to receive during the 40 days leading up to ascension? The Holy, Spirit. Holy Spirit's coming. Jesus is saying, I want you to stay in the city. A gift from my Father is coming. But first, got to do this high priestly thing. Verse 9. Well, verse 4. Gathering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, which he said, you heard of for me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, is it at this time you are restoring the kingdom of Israel? In other words, they're asking the same question we started off the whole thing asking, why does Jesus have to leave? Why can't we just start the kingdom? Why can't we just do it now? Why, why's he got to... He said, it's not for you to know times or epochs which the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and even to the remotest part of the earth all the way over there in Hutchinson. <laughs> Verse 9, it says, After he had said these things, he was lifted up while they were looking on, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Picture the priest descending the stairs through the clouds into the Holy of Holies. And as they were gazing intently into the sky while he was going, behold, two men in white clothing stood beside them. They also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in just the same way as you have watched him go. Does that mean our high priest is going to return on the clouds? As if the high priest is coming out of the Holy of Holies. Back to Hebrews. Back to Hebrews. Back to Hebrews. <clears throat> Hebrews 7. Hebrews 7, we're going to start in verse 25. Therefore he is able, who is he? Jesus. Therefore he is able also to save forever, how long? Forever. forever. How long? Ever. 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 That's a lot better than a year. Yeah. Right? Forever those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting for us, to have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens, who did, who does not need daily, like those high priests, to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people, because this he did once for all when he offered up himself. For the law appoints men as high priests who are weak, but the word of the oath which came after the law appoints a son made perfect forever. Now, chapter 8, verse 1, Hebrews, I like the way that this it starts off because it's where we all are. It says, now the main point in what has been said is this, because we need this. We need to like pull this together. The main point in what has been said is this. We have such a high priest who has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister in the sanctuary and in the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched, not man. For every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices. So it is necessary that this high priest also have something to offer. Hold that and then go to chapter 9, verse 24. For Christ did not enter a holy place made with hands a mere copy of the true one, but into heaven itself, 
now to appear in the presence of God for us. Why is he appearing in the presence of God? For us. Because we can't do it ourselves. Because we can't do it ourselves. Nor was it that he would offer himself often as the high priest enters the holy place year by year with blood that is not his own. Otherwise, he would have needed to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now, once at the consummation of the ages, he has been manifested to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And inasmuch as it is appointed for men to die once and after this comes judgment, so Christ also. Having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time for salvation without reference to sin. To those who eagerly await him. I want to read that last line again because it gives me chills. Will appear a second time for salvation without reference to sin. To those who eagerly await him. Does that refer to us? Do we have any ownership in that? Bet your honey you do. Eagerly await him, right? So in the process of atonement and reconciliation with God, is it fair for me to say that we're waiting for the high priest to return? Yes. That's fair to say. I'm not stretching this. You're, you're, you're seeing what I'm seeing. Yes. So what should we be doing in the meantime? Praying. 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 Seeking forgiveness, worshiping his name, praising his name, being ambassadors of Christ. Why? Because we're, we're waiting when I see the Lord, I want the Lord to not talk about my sin. I want the Lord, I, okay, what does this say again? Second time for salvation without reference to sin. Without reference to sin to those who eagerly await him. Now, the story of God's love for us, the story of God's love for mankind, it is certainly told through creation, where we are created in God's image and he breathes life into us. He didn't have to do that, but he did, right? It's certainly told at the crucifixion, where Jesus willingly went to the cross, so we didn't have to. It's also told at the resurrection where death is defeated, the power is taken away, God is about life, God is not in the death business, and, and we see uh, the, 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 the real majesty and power of the Lord on resurrection morning where Jesus walks out of that tomb. Yeah? Absolutely. We also see it at the ascension. We see it where our high priest carries carries our life in his hands back to Yahweh and intercedes for us. We also see that in the second coming of Christ because it isn't complete until the high priest comes back. When he comes back, he's going to banish sin forever on to the scapegoat and send the scapegoat into the wilderness where there'll be darkness weeping and gnashing of teeth and then he's going to claim his bride as his own and then we go to that great wedding feast whatever that looks like I'm okay with that story you okay with that story I'm okay with how that lines up because I understand where I stand in I understand where I am in. It's like I've read the back of the book. I know how this ends, but I also know where I'm at in the present. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for him to return. And then he's going to wrap all of that stuff up. Pastor, how's that going to look exactly? I don't know. I'm going to be as surprised as you. I don't know. All I know is I know what my responsibility is is the moment. In 
if you if you love if you love the Lord, and you're about His business, about His agenda, we want less, less. This is a poetic stretch. Just hear me, because I'm trying to make a point. We want less scapegoats going into the wilderness where there's darkness, weeping, and gnashing of teeth. We don't want more. We want less of that. We want more that are eagerly awaiting the second coming. That are more are part of God's family, right? We want we want the cooks at the great wedding banquet in the sky to go. Ooh, man, we're running out. Run run. That's what we want. We want as big of a crowd as we can have in the heavenly places to worship and honor and love the Lord forever and ever. And ever. Yeah? There's a song that my wife is going to play that, that's a, a new one to me. And she played it for me the other day. And I was like, man, I really love the words in that song. And it really kind of captures where we are right here, right now, in the moment. And so we're going to have Brooklyn get that light right there. And uh, if you want to sing it, sing it. If you want to, if you want to pray your way through it, pray your way through it. If you want to uh, come forward, I don't know if there's any paper in there or not. If you want to put stuff in the prayer wall, you can put stuff in the prayer wall. Uh, but let's, let's, let's meditate through this song. Would just be tears falling down my face, and this hurt would just be hurt, and no healing on the way. Thank you, Jesus. Heaven changes everything. A goodbye would be goodbye, but no, I'll see you again. And when a life is over, that will simply be the end. Thank you, Jesus. Heaven changes everything
everything Heaven changes everything duty, our joy, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Therefore, Lord, we praise you, joining our voices with the angels, the archangels, the whole company of heaven, who forever and ever sing this hymn, say these words, to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All praise and glory is yours, God, our Heavenly <coughs> Father. For in your tender mercy you gave your only Son, Jesus, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there by his one oblation of himself a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. And he instituted in his holy gospel, and he commanded us to continue this, this perpetual memory of his precious death and sacrifice until he comes again. So now, Lord, in your great goodness, we ask you to bless and to sanctify with your word and your Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine. Lord, I pray you take these normal, everyday, natural things and turn them into wild, crazy, supernatural things. Lord, may they be the vehicle by which your grace travels, your mercy travels, your love travels. Lord, may they be the blood and the body of Christ. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and after giving thanks, he breaks the bread. He gives a piece of that bread to everybody that was seated there. And he says, take, eat, this is my body. And it's broken for you. As often as you do this, as, as often as you meet in my name, as often as you gather together, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and after giving thanks, passes the cup around, and they all drink from the same cup. Jesus says, this is my blood. It's the blood of the new covenant. It's the blood that forgives sins. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance. Remembrance of you. Lord, we weren't there that night. I don't have video clips of it. But Lord, we remember. Nonetheless, we remember. We remember your blessed passion and your precious death. Your mighty resurrection and your glorious ascension. Lord, we remember your promise to come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, 
and Christ will come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Lord, we ask that you would accept this as our sacrifice of praise, our sacrifice of thanksgiving. We ask that you would grant by the merits and the death of your son Jesus, by faith in his blood, that we, your whole church, may obtain forgiveness of our sins, for they are many. Lord, I confess, Lord, I confess that I have sinned against you. That I have sinned against you. In my thoughts, my words, my deeds. In my thoughts, my words, my deeds. By what I have done. By what I have done. done what I have left undone. And what I have left undone. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved my neighbor as myself. I have not loved my neighbor as myself. Lord, for these things I am sorry. Lord, for these things I am sorry. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Please have mercy upon me. Please have mercy upon me. That I may delight in your will. That I may delight in your will. Walk in your way. Walk in your way. Bring glory to your name. Bring glory to your name. All my days. All my days. Amen. 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 <coughs> Although we are unworthy, Lord, because of our many sins, to offer you any sacrifice, any at all, Lord, we ask that you would accept this duty, this service that we owe, not weighing our merits, but parting our offenses through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by him, with him, in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Lord, I pray that you would unite the church that you would unite the church with the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. <coughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you're a guest with us today and you're wondering,
take a meditative pose still. It's got people. <laughs> <laughs> 